Um, in contrast to Harris jetting from Michigan to Georgia to Wisconsin in this one 24-hour period, uh, Trump in this 24-hour period has kind of gone fallow today. Um, no events, no travel, no appearances. I don't know what he's doing. That said, that may potentially be for the best for his campaign. I say that because the last event he did for his campaign was yesterday, and it produced headlines like this all day today. This was at Huffington Post today. Don shocks. If I lose, blame the Jews. Now, now, I should say, in fairness, in fairness, I need to note that this headline from our friends at Huffington Post is entirely accurate. I mean, you may think they are exaggerating with a headline like that, but they are not. Here's what it looks like at the Drudge Report tonight. Trump, blame the Jews if I lose. And again, in fairness to the people who operate the Drudge Report, that headline is accurate because that is a fair characterization. That is actually what Trump said. And he did it twice. <laughs> it started at an event that was supposed to be against anti-Semitism. Stick a pin in that amazing fact just for a moment. But he got up at this event yesterday and he said this. He said, quote, I am not going to call this a prediction, but in my opinion, the Jewish people would have a lot to do with a loss, meaning they'd have a lot to do with an election loss by him. That was the first event. Then he went to a second event the same night, last night, and he said it again, even more pointedly, just in case people didn't get it the first time. He said at the second event, quote, if I don't win this election, the Jewish people would really have a lot to do with that if it happens. These were not closed door events. These were not off the record events. This is him putting it on the record for the American people. Hey, if I lose the election, blame the Jews. I'm not going to call this as a prediction, but in my opinion, the Jewish people would have a lot to do with a loss. If I don't win this election, and the Jewish people would really have a lot to do with that if that happens. Right? I mean, <laughs> what can possibly go wrong? Jews are like 2% of the American population. But according to the Republican candidate for president and former president, if anything goes wrong in this next election for him, blame the Jews. It'll be the Jews' fault. Jews are like, 2.4% of the American population, put it on them. As I mentioned, these, the first comments from him were at an event which is supposed to be an anti-anti-Semitism event. What is anti-Semitism again? Well, most of the time, it's people saying, hey, pay no attention to who's ostensibly in charge, because really, it's the Jews in charge, and so you can blame them for all bad things. Most of the time, that is what anti-Semitism looks like, which is exactly what Trump is doing, just, just astonishing. We're 46 days out, and the Republican candidate for president is telling America, if I lose, blame Jewish people. That is really where we are in the campaign right now. And it turns out it's worse because this is not just a couple of comments at a couple of adjacent events. This is turning into kind of a theme week for them. Remember when he used to declare infrastructure week all the time and nothing ever happened? This is a different kind of week, a much worse one. All in the space of a few days, we've got Trump saying twice, if I lose the election, blame the Jews. Within a day of that, we also get the release of an interview that his running mate did with an RNC primetime speaker, former um, host from the Fox News Channel, who very famously just did a celebratory, laudatory, totally uncritical two-hour fan fest interview with a Holocaust denier in which the two of them talked about how Hitler wasn't the bad guy in World War II. I mean, this is a guy, to be clear, who says we need to be more understanding of the fact that really Hitler was just looking for a solution, in his words, to, for, quote, an acceptable solution to the Jewish problem. That's all he was doing. Why can't we be more understanding of that? He wasn't a bad guy. He was just looking for an acceptable solution to the Jewish problem. After this former Fox News host and the primetime RNC speaker um, interviewed him for two hours and praised him as the best public historian in the country, his um, podcaster, 
uh, his own podcast, um, The Holocaust Denier Guy, went to number one in the country. And the most notorious, like, famous godfathers of Holocaust denial in this country all praised it, right? Said they wanted credit. Finally, their words are getting out there. Number one podcast in the country on Apple Podcasts. On the day the um, White House had to put out a denunciation of that guy and the fact that an RNC primetime speaker just did a laudatory two-hour interview praising him, on the same day the White House had to put out their denunciation of that, J.D. Vance, the Republican nominee for vice president, taped an interview with that same RNC speaker and Fox News host, who had just celebrated America's best public historian, as America's best public historian, um, this, this Holocaust denial guy. So now that, that J.D. Vance interview, which was taped at that auspicious time, it's just come out, you know, great timing, right in time for Blame the Jews Day from his running mate. In that interview, which again has just come out, J.D. Vance makes the case that we don't really have a democracy in this country. And why not, not we shouldn't have a democracy in the future. It's not making that argument, although he kind of is. What he's saying is that we don't have a democracy now. And why is it that he thinks we don't have a democracy now? Because he says there's a secret powerful group who really controls things behind the scenes. So we should blame them. In reality, right now, we don't live in a real democracy in this country, right? The people who call the shots in this country have further and further divorced themselves from any kind of real democratic accountability, right? It's like a junior high school class in how this stuff works. Why exactly do we always get like Holocaust denial and weird blame the Jews stuff? going along with anti-democratic movements and movements to end democracy and to install a strongman or a fascist form of government instead. Hmm, why do these things go together? Well, wouldn't you know it, that specific idea also came up. So if you guys win and you start firing people who are acting against orders of their commander in chief and against the expressed will of voters, the New York Times will call it a fascist takeover. That's exactly right. So the question is, do you care? Well, I think we have to not care. We have to not care. Yes, yes, what we're going to do, some people will call it a fascist takeover. But that's not, you know, any concern to us. It's what we're going to do. So we're not going to care when they call it a fascist takeover. Because after all, our so-called democracy is a sham anyway. Would it really be so bad to give it up? Since we all know who's really in charge. Right? And Trump says you can blame them if he loses. I mean, this, this is the worst theme week ever. Trump did his blame the Jews thing yesterday, twice, just after the yes, it's going to look like a fascist takeover and no, we don't care interview came out. Uh, now today they're doing nothing, neither of them doing any campaign stuff at all. Tomorrow, J.D. Vance is going to do a live appearance with that same, same interviewer, a, a for-profit ticketed event. And Trump is going to go to North Carolina tomorrow, where his campaign says he has no plans to distance himself from or denounce the Republican candidate for governor who Trump endorsed there. The same candidate who reportedly announced himself online years ago as, quote, a black Nazi, quote, I'm a black Nazi. The all capitals on the word Nazi and the exclamation point at the end of it, those are not my embellishments. Those are his, according to online posts that... Uh, CNN has somewhat meticulously documented as those of Trump-endorsed Republican candidate for North Carolina governor, Mark Robinson. In other online posts, he said he preferred Hitler to any American politician in Washington. Now the latest reporting tonight is that um, uh, his online remarks also include him explicitly praising Mein Kampf. So um, Republican... <laughs> Gubernatorial candidate Mark Robinson is denying all of this. He is rejecting calls to quit the governor's race in North Carolina. No Republicans in the state appear to have denounced him for these specific posts in which he praises Hitler and proclaims himself to be a Nazi. No Republicans in the state apparently feel the need to distance themselves from it, and, and apparently neither does Trump. The deadline for removing Mr. Robinson from the ballot passed at midnight last night, so apparently they are... They are sticking with him. I told you this is the worst theme week ever.